Hello and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Bill Gray Legion Stadium at Champion Car Wash Field in beautiful Roseburg, Oregon. As today we get ready to bring you coverage of the 2A1A state playoff semifinal matchup. It's the number two seed, Umpqua Valley Christian, hosting number three seed, Blanchett Catholic. The winner moves on to Saturday's state championship bout against the winner on the other side of the bracket between St. Paul and Kennedy. Should be in store for a good one this afternoon here from Champion Car Wash Field, and we are excited to have you with us for our sports special that we have for you here on 541radio.com and on our YouTube channel, 1490 The Score. I'm Joey Kieran. It's great to be with you here on this Tuesday evening in the Umpqua Basin. A beautiful day for baseball temperatures. Not the scorching hot that we had last week. A little bit of a breeze, sunshine overhead, and a good crowd filing in for today's ball game. We are going to be getting you to first pitch of today's game coming up here in just a few moments. We'll have a look at starting lineups and plenty more for you as we get ready to bring you this OSAA On Point Community Credit Union State Championship event. On Point, as the title sponsor of the OSA State Championships, does everything that it can to help our team and community get ahead. On Point delivers a local banking and lending its members need to reach their goals and make more possible. Visit On Point at onpointcu.com. On Point, federally insured by NCUA, equal housing opportunity. Well, you've got on one side the Umpqua Valley Christian Monarchs coming in at 27-3 and on the season. They've won their last three games after winning their league, Special District 5, with a perfect 14-0 and record. On the other side, it's the Blanchett Catholic Cavaliers, who dropped down from the 3A classification last year to the 2A-1A classification this season. They've won four straight coming into today's matchup, 27-2 and on the season, and 18-0 and in Special District 3 play to earn a league championship here here this season. The two teams will meet for the first time this season with the winner moving on to Saturday's state championship event. Got a chance to catch up with both head coaches prior to today's matchup. Got a chance to catch up with head coach Dave York of the Umpqua Valley Christian Monarchs to find out more about how the season's been going and how his team is feeling coming into today's matchup. Coach, uh, congratulations on getting to this point in the season. Uh, for you guys, uh, you know, I know this is a, a goal for, for you guys as you set out the season, and once again, you're able to get back here. Mm-hmm. How's the team feeling at this point? I know you've had, uh, you know, some tight games uh, throughout yeah. the postseason, but the last one you guys kind of pull ahead late. Uh, how are you guys feeling about this portion of the season? Yeah, I mean, we always want to be playing your best baseball mm-hmm. late. So, I mean, I think we are. Um, guys seem loose. That's this kind of group. They're pretty <laughs> loose, and they enjoy playing the game. So, you know, it's a sunny day, and we're playing the last week of baseball. So that's always good. <laughs> it, it, it very much is. Mm-hmm. And you're at home, which is a, a great Certainly. bonus for you guys. Uh, this is a group that's been at this point, and uh, mm-hmm. you've still got a somewhat young group, and uh, yet they've been able to play in a state championship game last year, been at this point in the postseason. How do you feel like, you know, the experience of being where they were last year has helped them out here in this year's postseason? Well, every team's new, you mm-hmm. know. So, I mean, uh, we got about three guys that haven't been in the postseason run yet, so that's still showing up a little bit. And they're still young. I mean, like I've said before, I mean, they're, they're all high school kids, and you just never know when the anxiety is going to be a bit much, and um, you just hope they can calm down and play. And right now it seems like they've, you know, that, that last year's experience helped them. It's also been a bit of a challenge because their expectations are kind of, they got to get there, and they feel the pressure of that. And we've tried to take all the weddings to, uh, just away from them and say, let's play for the day. Let's mm-hmm. not worry about what's behind us. So. Uh, today, you guys uh, take on a, a Blanchard Catholic team that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you look at the score box and uh, their last one was a big one. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they can have the uh, the opportunity to put up some firepower. Yep. What do you feel like are some of the keys to today's uh, ball game? Well, we got to keep them off the bag. We can't give them, can't give them the, you know, base on balls or, mm-hmm. or give them extra bags. And uh, they're quick. They're going to run base as well. And they're going to attack and be, you know, kind of go at it. So we're going to have to compete. And I think our guys on the mound are going to have to mix their pitches in. Hopefully, we can get everything over, you know, mm-hmm. off-speed stuff over for a strike. And and uh, mix in the pitches like we need to. All right, Coach. Best of luck to you guys out there today. Thank you, Joey. That is Coach Dave York from the Umpqua Valley Christian Monarchs talking here in the pregame as we get ready for first pitch. Also got a chance to catch up with head coach of Blanchett Catholic, David Winstead, to talk more about how the Cavaliers found themselves here in the semifinals. Coach, uh, you guys are coming off of a big win over Reedsport in the uh, in the last round. How do you feel like the guys have been feeling? I know you had the holiday weekend in, in, in there that kind of disrupts yeah. a little bit, but how are the team feeling coming on the uh, long bus ride? I think they're energetic and 
anxious to get going. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were in the semifinals last year in the 3A. Um, they uh, played their hearts out last year, and I think they have some unfinished business, and you can tell they're kind of checked in for work. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how they've been approaching the, the, the last half of the season, ready to go. Um, yeah, we did score quite a bit of runs on Friday. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, Reach Board didn't have all their pitchers available, so that has some impact by all means. But um, our defense, our pitching, and our hitting is all coming together at the same time. Yeah. Um, you know, looking at it, I know you got a, a fairly young roster for your team this year. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like they almost maybe don't quite understand quite the moment that they're at just because uh, getting a chance to play in yeah. the semis last year too? Well, being the fact that we had a good playoff run last year mm-hmm. has helped them a little bit. Yeah. We also have some individuals that have played at higher level. Um, for instance, our starting pitcher today has actually played in the Little League World Series. So oh, wow. being in front of a crowd like this is something that he's used to seeing. So um, like I said, even though our, we're, we're sophomore junior base strong mm-hmm. we have one senior graduating that's going to college to play ball mm-hmm. um, really they have uh, a little bit more maturity than you would expect uh, it's made my life as coaching <laughs> a little easier because they get the game yeah it's um, it's it's kind of been a fun season so far all right best of luck to you coach thank you well we are just about to get ready those are the two coaches for today's matchup well, let's go to head coach or excuse me let's go to public address announcer kenny sherman with a look at today's teams number four nathan holland number 11 jt walsh number 15 patrick walsh number 19 antonio hernandez Number 35, Kristen Luke. Number 43, Ryan Grilotti. And number 77, LaCoya Quintero. And now your starting lineup for the Cavaliers. Batting first and playing second base, number three, Noah Hancock. Batting second and playing center field, number 17, Tyson Smith. Batting third and playing third base, number nine, Dylan Cuff. Batting fourth and catching, number six, Spencer Kowalski. Batting fifth and playing shortstop, number 28, Drew Bartle. Batting sixth and pitching, number 10, Carson McNally. Batting seventh and playing right field, number 18, Griffin Ruckin. Batting eighth and playing first base, number eight, Landon Gehrig. And batting ninth and the designated hitter, number 34, Mitch Ward. And playing left field, number two, Riley Pratt. The Cavaliers are coached by head coach Dave Winstead, with the assistant coach is Paul Holden, Gary Olivio, and the manager is Rick Schindler. Your blank check Catholic Cavaliers. Now let's meet the home team, the UBC Monarchs. Wearing number five, Dylan Sparks. Wearing number six, Will Haynes. Wearing number eight, Lucas Saylor. Wearing number 10, Caden Christenberry. Wearing number 13, Aaron Phillips. Wearing number 15, Noah Evans. Wearing number 23, Brandon Perron. And wearing number 24, Joe Bueckley. And now your starting lineup. Batting first and pitching, number 11, Ty Hellenthal. Batting second and playing catcher, number 12, Kevin Shaver. Batting third and playing shortstop, number three, Daniel Boone Withers. Batting fourth and playing second base, number one, Logan Anderson. Batting fifth and playing center field, number nine, Tyler Haynes. Batting sixth and playing first base, number 17, Ty Barron. Batting seventh and playing right field, number four, Brooks Potter. Batting eight and playing third base, number two, Sean Simonson. And batting ninth and playing left field, number seven, Levi Hurd. The Monarchs are coached by Dave York, along with assistant coaches Lynn Withers, Toby Luther, Tim Barron, Joe Gaither, Andrew Renier, and Nathan York. Those are the two teams, as announced by public address announcer Kenny Sherman, as we now get ready for the national anthem, also performed by Kenny Sherman. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail at 
the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in it, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Who oh, say does that star spangled banner yet for the land of the free and the home of the brave? Y'all are gonna have to make a bunch of noise because. That is Kenny Sherman with the National Anthem prior to today's first pitch between Umpqua Valley Christian and Blanchett Catholic. Again, I'm Joey Kiran. Happy to be with you here for today's sports special between the Monarchs and the Cavs. The winner moving on to face Kennedy or St. Paul in the state championship game coming up on Saturday. Let's go ahead and take a look at today's starting lineups. You might have heard them just a bit there from... Kenny, but let's get you those starters. For Blanchett Catholic, head coach David Winstead will have Noah Hancock starting at second base, followed by Tyson Smith, the center fielder. Dylan Cuff, the third baseman, bats third, followed by catcher Spencer Kowalski. Drew Bartles is the shortstop. Uh, Bartels, excuse me. Carson McNally will pitch, batting in the sixth position. Hitting seventh, playing in right field is Griffin Meckin. Landon Gehrig is the first baseman, batting eighth, and Mitch Wart will be the DH in the nine position. He'll bat for starting left fielder Riley Pratt. That is a look at the starting lineup for the Blanchett Catholic Cavs coming in at 27 and two on the season. They will face the right-hander, Ty Hellenthal, on the mound for UVC. Hellenthal comes in making his 11th start this season. A 7-2 and two record with one save, 54 and a third innings pitched, a 1.68 ERA, 58 strikeouts, and nine walks this year. His battery mate behind the plate is Kevin Schaefer, who will be catching today for the Monarchs. Looking around the uh, rest of the diamond out at first base is Tyg Barron at, first, at second base is Logan Anderson on the left side of the diamond. Sean Simonson at third and Daniel Withers at short. In the outfield from left to right, Levi Hurd, Tyler Haynes, and Brooks Potter. Starting lineup today for Umpqua Valley Christian defensively. It'll be Noah Hancock to dig in. Right-handed batter will start things off for the Cavs. Wearing the black tops, gray trousers, blue numbers on the back outlined in white for the Blanchett Catholic Cavaliers. First pitch high and inside, ball one. We are underway in this semifinal matchup. The white sleeveless tops with the white trousers for UVC is a pitch batted in the air right side. It's first baseman Barron underneath it will make that catch one away. Start things off here in the first inning. Noah Hancock will fly out. Next battle, the center fielder, number 17, Ty Brings up Tyson Smith. Smith. Smith, the starting center fielder, bats with one out and nobody on. First pitch to Smith in the inside corner for a called strike. Hellenthal did pick up the win in the quarterfinal round in an 11-5 victory over Bandon Pacific for the Monarchs. And strike two taken on the outside corner. Hellenthal only pitched four innings in that matchup. Gave up one earned run on seven hits, four strikeouts, no walks in the victory. The ball fouled away by Smith, stays alive. Going to have quite the pitcher's duel between these two clubs here today. Hellenthal, the ace for the Monarchs. McNally starting on the mound on the other side as a one-hopper. Knocked down it short by Withers. Has to make the quick throw. It's offline. Bounces off the front of the visiting dugout. Staying at first base will be Tyson Smith. A sharp line drive to shortstop for Smith. One-hop to Withers. 
Did everything he could to get in front of that one. Knocked it down, lost his footing. Had to get back up and throw to first. Knew he had to be quick with it. And unfortunately, didn't get it there fa uh, on target. Tyke Barron coming off of the bag to try and get to that one couldn't. And they got lucky it didn't go out of play into the visiting dugout down the first base side. One on. And one out is a pickoff throw to first base, not in time. Scoreboard reads a base hit for Tyson Smith. Another pickoff throw, not in time. So a hit in the ball game for Blanchett Catholic here early going. Helenthal will deliver first pitch to the three-hitter, Dylan Cuff. Called strike one on his breaking ball. Sits at the top of the zone. Good crowd showing off as another pickoff throw. Not quite in time. Close at first base, but just a fraction behind. O one one pitch. Another pickoff throw over there. Got him! Clear the bases, Helenthal. That's four or five pickoff throws to first and finally gets Smith. Two down. At the plate, an 0-1 count. That ball goes opposite field into right field for Cuff. And that pickoff now even more important as Cuff gets a line drive into right field. Gets himself on base with two outs. Puts just a man at first. Could have been an opportunity to have first and third with just one out if Tyson Smith not picked off at first base. This will bring up the cleanup man, Spencer Kowalski, the lone senior on this Blanchett Catholic team. He'll take high for ball one, heading to Centralia Community College. He's had quite the season for this Blanchett Catholic club. Hit a grand slam in the first inning against Reedsport in the quarterfinals. Sixty-eight degrees, a little breezy here in Roseburg as we get this game underway. Another pickoff throw to first, not going to be in time. Wind actually not really blowing at the moment. The American flag in center field hanging, but it has been picking up. Usually will blow in from left field as a ball out towards center field, making the adjustment. Tyler Haynes underneath it for the catch. Three down, a man left stranded at first for Blanchett Catholic. No runs, two hits, no errors, and one man left on. Scoreless through a half inning of play. We've got the bottom of the first coming up for you here from Champion Car Wash Field. We'll go ahead and take a look at your starting lineup for the home team. That is Umqua Valley Christian. Leading things off is the pitcher, Ty Hellenthal, followed by catcher, Kevin Schaefer. The shortstop, Daniel Withers, will bat third. Logan Anderson at second base, batting cleanup, followed by Tyler Haynes, the center fielder. Ty Barron is the first baseman. He bats sixth, followed by Brooks Potter, the right fielder, batting seventh. Sean Simonson, the third baseman, will hit in the eighth position. And Levi Hurd, the left fielder, will round out the starting nine for head coach Dave York and the Umpqua Valley Christian Monarchs. As we head to the bottom of the first, taking a look at the defense for the visiting Blanchett Catholic Cavaliers. On the mound will be Carson McNally coming off of a complete game one-hit shutout against Reedsport. 
Actually, excuse me. That was against Grant Union Pacific City in the second round of the state playoffs. McNally got the complete game victory there and a 3-0 victory for Blanchett Catholic. McNally had 12 strikeouts in those seven innings and gave up just the one hit and no earned runs. He'll be on the mound, right-hander for the Cavaliers. He throws in to Spencer Kowalski, the catcher. Looking around the rest of the diamond for this Cavaliers team at first base is Landon Garrick at second base Noah Hancock on the left side of the diamond Dylan Cuff Drew Bartels at shortstop and then in the outfield from left to right you've got Riley Pratt Tyson Smith and Griffin Meckin go to the bottom of the first Ty Hellenthal leads things off for UVC in a scoreless ball game Hellenthal, right-handed batter, right-handed thrower. First pitch from McNally. A breaking ball in for a called strike, and we are underway in the bottom of the first here from Champion Car Wash Field. Hellenthal hitting 422 on the year. His 0-1 pitch here from McNally out of his windup. Misses outside as he tries to fire in the fastball. One one delivery. The wind and fire again outside. And McNally here early on. A lot of indications of a pitcher trying to fire in just a little harder. Keeps pulling across his body and throwing outside to Helenthal, the right handed batter. Bounces one outside in front of the plate. And the count goes three and one for Helenthal. McNally has been strong throughout the year. Carson McNally, a sophomore for this Blanchett Catholic club, has a no-hitter, seven-inning no-hitter to his record this year. 3-1 pitch, hitters count. Ground ball left side, deep in the hole, and can't get it out of the glove cleanly for Bartels. And on safely will be Hellenthal. I think he had a good chance of trying to beat that one out either way. Deep in the hole at shortstop for Bartels. That's a long throw back across the diamond. And even if he gets it out of the glove cleanly, he's got a long way to go to get that ball across the diamond in time. And Hellenthal, a speedy runner down the base path. He probably had a good chance to beat that one out. Man at first with nobody out here in the bottom of the first inning, UVC. Looking to strike first. McNally will fire, misses low. Nice job behind the plate by the senior, Kowalski. To keep that ball in front of him. That does not allow Hellenthal to think about trying to run. Big moment here for Carson McNally in this semifinal matchup. And Maybe pressure getting to him. Ball lost underneath. Kowalski will locate it. Hellenthal not running. 2-0 count. This is a big moment. This team in the 3A classification last year did make it to the semifinals, and they want to try and take it a step further, feel like they have some unfinished business, is what Coach Winstead was telling us. And so despite the fact this is a very young team with only one senior, this Blanchett Catholic club feels like they are prepared for the big moments. And also looking to achieve just a little bit more than where they ended up last year in the 3A classification. Now here at the 2A, 1A level, they're one win away from getting to that state championship game, which would be the first state championship berth in school history for Blanchett Catholic. 2-0 pitch from McNally. He'll miss, and that ball will get away. That's going to trickle all the way to the backstop up to get it. Kowalski tracks it down near the on-deck circle for UVC. Up to second base easily goes Hellenthal. And it's a 3-0 count at the plate for Kevin Shaver. Shaver showed a bunt on the first pitch. And since then, he has done nothing but pretty much stand in the box. Has not gotten anything close to the zone as of yet. 3-0 pitch. Can McNally work one across? He will. 
Looked like Shaver thought that ball inside. He tossed away the bat and was heading to first, but gets called back by our home plate umpire here today. Kevin Shaver. This season batting 324 for the Monarchs. 3-1. Takes high for ball four. Nobody out. Runners at first and second for the Monarchs. Heart of their lineup coming up to bat. Get a courtesy runner for the catcher. That will be Joe Pueckley. Who will run down at first base. Daniel Withers. Both these teams have pretty young rosters. Withers, one of them, a junior. Last year was a big player for the Monarchs as a sophomore, helping them get to that state title game where they fell short against Kennedy. Takes outside for ball one. Withers comes in, batting 420 on the year. McNally misses outside and finding the strike zone has been difficult for him here to start. And we're going to get a visit out to the mound for the coaching staff here for Blanchett Catholic along with David Winstead. You've got Paul Holden. Gary Olivo and Rick Schindler, your assistant coaches for this Cavaliers club out of the Salem area, east side of town. They are right there on the bubble for the 2A and 3A classifications. They just fall under the mark at about 140 for their average enrollment. So they drop down from 3A to the 2A level this year. And for baseball, they're in the 2A, 1A classification. That makes them one of the larger 2A schools in the state. And looking to get to the state championship game here at the 2A, 1A level this year. Would be their first berth in the state title game in any classification. 2-0 pitch to Withers is fouled away. Daniel Withers chasing low and outside. Well, for over 45 years, Pacific Office Automation has remained locally owned and operated, supporting the community, people, and places that matter. That's why Pacific Office Automation continues to sponsor the OSAA year after year. Pacific Office Automation, problem solved. The 2-1 hits the outside corner to even up the count against Withers. At first base, Running for Kevin Schaefer, the catcher, is Joe Bueckley. Out at second base, Ty Hellenthal running for himself. They could have brought in a runner for the catcher. Don't believe they did. They did not. 2-2 pitch, high and inside. Breaking ball misses. McNally finds himself with a full count. Nobody out. Bottom of the first. Still scoreless in this one, but UVC... Starting to put some early pressure on against the Cavaliers. 3-2 delivery. Swung on and missed, and a huge strikeout for McNally. Got him to chase the high heat right up around the shoulders, and Withers goes down swinging. Big strikeout to get Daniel Withers, especially to get it for the first out. There is the double play opportunity out on the field. Third base, the only unoccupied position on the infield right now. It'll bring up Logan Anderson, the sophomore, bats in the cleanup position. McNally's first pitch low on the outer half. For Anderson. Comes into today's contest. Batting 520 on the year. Yeah, that's good. The 1-0 delivery. That one behind his head bounces off the glove for Kowalski. Tracks it down. At least knocked it down the third base side, able to get to it quickly. 
on the runner's wall. Stay put. 2-0 count for Anderson. 5-20 on the year. He's got 27 RBI. That trails just Daniel Withers to lead the team. He's got the RBI opportunity here with a 2-0 pitch. He'll take it for strike one. Hellenthal at second base with one out. Bueckley at first. The 2-1, high. Anderson with two hits in the 11-5 win over Bandon Pacific. That was last Friday in the second round of the 2A-1A playoffs. And there's a pitch on the 3-1 inside for ball four. Drop the bat, head to first. Anderson on safely. And the bases are loaded for UVC. Tyler Haynes had a home run in the win over Bandon Pacific, part of a big six-run fourth inning that propelled UVC in front. Haynes, the left-handed batter, will dig in with the bases loaded and just one out. First pitch, he sends one, shallow center field. It'll drop in for a base knock. Hellenthal will score. Everybody else moves up 90 feet. And we've got our first run of the ball game. Didn't take long for Tyler Haynes. Drops an RBI single into shallow center field. Scores Hellenthal to make it 1-0. UVC in front. The bases are still loaded with just one out. And it's Ty Barron who will stand in. The first baseman looks to keep it going. His first pitch fouled away. Gets out of play behind home. Barron, the first baseman for this UVC club. He comes in batting 288 on the year. He's got 18 RBI. Perfect opportunity to add to that total. The 0 1 misses high, and it's a 1 1 count. One-one delivery for McNally. Does hit the outside corner for strike two. McNally looking to find a ground ball to try and get out of things here in this first first inning of this semifinal matchup. They play a double play depth up the middle. Now third base, Joe Bueckley running for catcher Kevin Schaefer. Ground ball, foul, just down that third base line. One ball, two strikes here in the bottom of the first inning. Long half inning here for Carson McNally. As he faces Ty Barron, he'll get a swing and a miss. For strike three. Second strikeout of the frame for McNally. Two down, and Brooks Potter will stand in. Right fielder number four, Brooks Potter. Potter, the right fielder, is the seventh hitter to the plate for Umqua Valley Christian. First pitch, swinging that ball in the air. Foul territory, playable. Kowalski will make the catch as he heads towards the on-deck circle for Blanchett Catholic. And UVC strikes first, but McNally finds a way out of things here in the first inning. Faces seven hitters. 
Gives up one run on two hits. There were no errors, and three men left on for the Monarchs. We're through one inning of play. This is a sports special. UVC and Blanchett Catholic in the 2A-1A semifinals here on 541radio.com. Hey there, sports fans. Thanks for watching this local sporting event online at 541radio.com. Did you know there's more than one way to watch games online? You can watch games on your laptop or desktop computer, your tablet, or even your smartphone just by going to 541radio.com. But we also use YouTube to stream all of our video broadcasts, which means you could be watching this game on your big screen TV with a number of different streaming devices. You can stream our live YouTube broadcast through your PlayStation or Xbox gaming device or through streaming devices like Google Chromecast, Apple TV, or Roku. There's plenty of ways to follow this live local sporting event. Plus, you can find past events archived on 1490 The Score's YouTube channel. Find us on YouTube and subscribe today to keep up with the latest in local sports coverage. Top of the second inning, one nothing. UVC in front. Ty Hellenthal with a lead to work with. We'll fire a first pitch strike one to Drew Bartels. The shortstop leading things off for Blanchett Catholic here in the second. Takes low and inside, a 1-1 count. In the first inning, UVC able to score. On a single by Ty Haynes, this ball popped high in the air towards left field, towards the line. Levi Hurd will make the catch out near the fouled line on the left field side. To retire Drew Bartles. Our Bartels, the leadoff man here in the second, goes down one away. Carson McNally, the pitcher, will look to try and help his own cause. Make that the pitcher number 10, Carson McNally. McNally. A sophomore. Interesting note that uh, the coach, Dave Winstead, uh, David Winstead, excuse me, telling us in the uh, pregame that McNally played in the Little League World Series. It's always kind of cool. That's one of my favorite events throughout the sports calendar. Low from Hellenthal, a 2-0 count with one out and nobody on base here in the top of the second. Strike taken. McNally a 2-1 count. Foul ball for McNally. Got just a piece of that one there from Hellenthal. Breaking ball hits the outside corner. Froze him at the plate. McNally didn't think that one was going to catch the zone. Goes down looking. First strikeout in the game for Ty Hellenthal. First pitch for Hellenthal misses now against Griffin Mecken, the right fielder. Two hits in the first inning for Blanchett Catholic, but they could not take advantage as a strike across by Hellenthal. Hellenthal picking off Tyson Smith, who got on with the first hit of the game. And the 1-1 sits on the outside corner for another called strike. The 1-2 pitch. Ground ball towards short. Withers charges, throws just in time to retire Mecken for the final out here in the second. A 1-2-3 top half of the second inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. It's still 1-0 UVC in front as we go to the bottom of the second on 541radio.com.
bottom of the second inning here from Champion Car Wash Field. Joey Keyran here with you. I cover things at the local sports radio station. The score, 92.3 FM and 1490 AM. Excited to be out here for this semifinal matchup. UVC's Sean Simonson will lead things off in the second inning against Carson McNally. First pitch fouled away. Also do some part-time sports writing for the local newspaper, the News Review. I see one of the photographers, Nathan Miller here, showing his viewfinder on his camera at the final play of that top half of the second inning. A bang-bang play at first for Griffin Meckin. Looks like it must have been a photo finish at the bag as he was showing, I think, some Blanchett Catholic fans the freeze frames of the play at the bag. It definitely was close. Daniel Withers, the shortstop's throw across the diamond. Took a little bit long to get it out of his hands. A pitch outside for McNally. 2-1 count to Simonson. But the call at the bag was out. And that finished things off in the top half of the second inning. A 1-2-3 frame for Hellenthal. 2-1 pitch here from McNally. Over the heart of the plate for a called strike. Sean Simonson, the starting third baseman for UVC. 250 hitter. 2 2 delivery. Adam McNally, the righty. Got him to chase a pitch inside. Got just a piece of it there for Simonson. Two balls, two strikes. The 2 2. That one got away from McNally. Breaking ball stayed high and inside. Not phased at all with Simonson. Simonson will get a hold of one out towards left field, high in the air. It carries to uh, Riley Pratt, the left fielder. Who secures the baseball for the first out in the bottom of the second. Next better left fielder, number seven, Levi Hurd. There's one away. It's the nine-hitter, Levi Hurd, that will wrap up the first time through the lineup card for Coach York and the Monarchs. Hurd, the starting left fielder for UVC. McNally's first pitch, high and away. Levi Hurd batting 322 on the year. Has one double, one triple out of the nine spot here today. He will look to try and keep going. He tried to pull up on the check swing, but goes around. Whoa. One and one. Okay. One ball, one strike. I thought that was going to be called for a swing and a miss. Scoreboard had 2-0 at first, but got corrected quickly. 2-1 count now. Here in the 2A-1A state semifinals. Winner moving on to the championship game on Saturday. 2-1 pitch hits the outside corner. Out of Douglas County, uh, we're also following South Umqua baseball in the semifinals of the 3A state playoffs, taking on the Banks Braves. That one got started last hour, about an hour ago. Foul ball and a check swing for Hurd. 2-2 count remains. That last check that... South Umpqua score was 1-1. South Umpqua and Banks tied in that matchup. A 2-2 pitch here from McNally. Strike three, got him looking. That was a good spot on that pitch. McNally finds the inside corner at the knees. That's a tough one to deal with for a hitter. I mean, just in... At the knees. Not a lot of hitters going to be able to do with that pitch. And Levi Hurd unable to do anything with it. Goes down looking for the second out. Here in the bottom of the second. 
Outside on the first pitch, leadoff man Ty Hellenthal up for a second time. He had an infield single in the first. Looks like they're in the fifth inning. South Umpqua and Banks still tied 1-1. Check swing, went around for a called strike one. We'll also see if we can find a way to scrounge up any scores from Kennedy and St. Paul squaring off on the other side of the 2A-1A state playoff bracket. The 1-1, Hellenthal fouls away. Kennedy on the other side undefeated. They're obviously looking to try and finish the season undefeated and win a state championship to follow up last year's state title. If they can finish the season undefeated, they would be the fifth team to finish off an undefeated baseball season with a championship. Out towards center field, charging in, unable to get to it in time. Tyson Smith will have to play that one off the hop as Hellenthal will get his second hit of the game. That one not very hard to hit, but well enough to get past the shortstop. Bartels going out to try and get to it. And not quite far enough for Tyson Smith to run underneath it. One on, two down. Kevin Schaefer drew a walk his first time up. He will step in here. In the dirt, Kowalski knocks it down. count. Outside, two balls, no strikes. So Kennedy looks to be leading six. Six Six-nothing in the fourth inning over St. Paul. Kennedy does have three wins against St. Paul already this season. So a rematch from league play for Kennedy and St. Paul in that one. And Kennedy got the best of all three of the matchups during the regular season, and it looks like they're getting the better of that one again. 2-0 pitch in at the belt buckle for a called strike. Not surprising there, but Kennedy taking care of business, looking to move one game closer to repeating as state champions. They're in the fourth inning of that one, leading 6-0. 2-1 pitch. Ground ball up the middle, played by Bartels. Flips it underhand to second baseman Noah Hancock. That'll retire Hellenthal at second base to finish off the frame. Fielder's choice for Schaefer. So for UVC, nothing added here in the second inning. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We go to the third inning, still 1-0. UVC in front of Blanchett Catholic. This is the 2A1A State Playoffs on 541radio.com. Top of the third inning, Joey Kieran here with you. Hey, you can stay connected to your favorite team with the OSAA Live mobile app. OSAA Live features the latest scores, schedules, and rankings for all teams and leagues across Oregon. Access OSAA state championship programs, read the latest prep news and information, search OSAA Live in the App Store or on Google Play to download today. First pitch from Ty Hellenthal comes in high and inside to the eight-hitter Landon Gehrig for Blanchett Catholic. Takes low, 2-0 count. Gehrig, Mitch Wart, and then back to the top of the lineup for Noah Hancock here in the third inning for the Cavaliers. 
Helenthal will miss low and inside, 3-0 count. Times, locations, all of that still to be determined for state championship baseball, but all of the games will be played on Saturday as a four-pitch walk issued to start things off here in the third inning for Blanchett Catholic. Cavaliers will get a man on base for the first time since the first inning. That's the first walk issued by Ty Hellenthal. One on, nobody out. Mitch Wart will stand in. The nine hitter is the DH, batting for Riley Pratt, the left fielder. He'll square to bunt early. Pulls it back. That ball bounces away, but the runner will hold that first. A 1-0 count for Wart. And Shaver tracks it down. Saturday State Championship Affairs. They'll all be played. There'll be a doubleheader at one location and a triple header at another location. Now squaring to bunt. That ball fouled away, hitting off of the batter. Wart while he was in the batter's box still. A 1-1 count. So kind of depending on the matchups, I know that some of the locations they've discussed, the University of Oregon, PK Park, Oregon State University, Goss Stadium, Coleman Field. Also, I know they've discussed the uh, Volcano Stadium in Kaiser. The ball fouled away, back to the netting behind home for Wart. Also, possibility of the University of Portland is another location, but you'd think Kennedy out of kind of the Woodburn, Mount Angel area up there, if they hang on to their lead. And then uh, one of these two teams, they may not be heading all the way to Portland. There's a ground ball right side. Going to be played by second baseman Noah Hancock. His only play is to go to first, excuse me, Logan Anderson. His only play is to go to first base to get Wart. So Wart will ground out 4-3. to three. Unfortunately, he doesn't get credit for a sacrifice in that situation. But he does move the runner up 90 feet. Puts a man in scoring position with one out when the top of the lineup coming up here, it is Noah Hancock. RBI opportunity for Hancock, trailing 1-0 are the Cavaliers. Helenthal out of his stretch. Breaking ball, drops in for a strike on the inside corner. Blanchett Catholic out of the Salem area. You would think if it's Blanchett Catholic that moves on against Kennedy, who's winning, they were winning 6-0 in the fourth inning was Kennedy. You would think that they might look at Volcano Stadium for that matchup. If it's UVC and Kennedy, they might look at somewhere in between like Eugene or Corvallis. Those would be possibilities, you'd think. 1-1 pitch. Hits the outside corner for a strike to Hancock. Noah popped out to first baseman Tyg Barron. In his first at-bat to lead the ball game off, he'll take high and away. So it will we'll wait to find out. We should know all of that coming up by the latest tomorrow morning, I would imagine, sometime. State championship games, times, location, all that should be determined after all the semifinal games today. 2-2 pitch popped up. This one shallow left field for Hancock, and he will fly out for a second time, two away. Levi Hurd making the catch. Still a man at second base for Blanche Catholic. But now we'll have to try and move him around with two away. Last year, Blanche Catholic going 19-6 on the season and finished at 10-2 in 3A Special District 1. They were the second place team out of their league a year ago. Tyson Smith at the plate. First pitch takes a little high for ball one. Blanchett Catholic was the seven seed in the 3A state playoffs. Went all the way to the semifinals where they lost 5-4 to four against Sandy Am Christian. A strike taken. 1-1 one, one count. Yeah. 
Out at second base is Landon Gehrig after a leadoff walk. Ball right side, hooks foul out of play. Strike two. One ball, two strikes for Ty Hellenthal here in the third. As he tries to close it out and keep the shutout intact. A 1-2 delivery. That ball golfed out towards left field. Diving attempt. Did he come up with the catch? Up with it was heard. They're going to signal that ball dropped in that he trapped it, and we've got a tie ball game. So the call is, is that Levi Hurd, he came up with the baseball, but that he didn't catch it cleanly. And so that will be a two-out single for Tyson Smith. And he makes it a 1-1 ball game. Number nine, Dylan Cuff. And Dylan Cuff will come up to hit. Great attempt there by Hurd and left field. But he just was a fraction late as the first pitch fouled down the right field side by Cuff for strike one. He was a hair late on that one. I mean, great thing that he caught that ball or was able to trap it and scoop it up. Otherwise, that ball rolls for quite a while, I'm sure, with Ty Haynes trying to back him up. But it could have been extra bases for Smith. But it does the job as it drives in the game tie and run. A ball fouled again down the right field side for Cuff. And out of play. So Ty Smith comes up with a big hit. He scores Landon Gehrig from second on a two-out line drive single to shallow left field. Here in the top of the third, 1-1 ball game. Dylan Cuff, the 0-2 outside. One ball, two strikes. Pickoff throw to first. One, two count. Helen Thal trying to get out of this frame. Another one behind it for Cuff. Laces one to the bullpen down the right field side. For the fans from Blanchett Catholic, maybe seeing Champion Car Wash Field for the first time. All artificial turf everywhere, the dirt, the mound, home plate, base paths, all of it is artificial turf. Infield and outfield grass, foul territory, the bullpens. 320 down the lines, both left and right field. 385 to dead center field. It's a big ballpark, plays big. Bullpens are in play down both sides. There's a fence that goes a little ways down past each of the dugouts, but you can still make plays in foul territory, and a ball, if it finds a way to get over there, that could still be a live playable ball. It's a ground ball, slow roller towards short, scooped up by Withers, over to Barron for the final out. UVC will get the final out there, but a two-out single by Tyson Smith ties us up as we go to the bottom of the third inning. One run on one hit. There were no errors, and one man left on base. A leadoff walk leads to the game-tying run for the Cavaliers. This is 2A1A Baseball Playoff Action on 541radio.com.
1-1 ball game in the bottom of the third. Deer style, efficiency, and performance. Glad we're on the same team this season and every season. Let's keep huddling up and going for it. Toyota, let's go places. UVC took a 1-0 lead in the bottom of the first. Blanchett Catholic able to strike back in the third inning on a two-out single by Tyson Smith. We've got a brand-new ball game now, 1-1, as the pitch inside from Carson McNally, who is facing the lineup for a second time. McNally the first time through the lineup, struck out three, but did give up the go-ahead run in the first inning as he misses low, 2-0 count for Daniel Withers, who struck out in the first inning. First time through the lineup, gave up two hits, he walked two and struck out three. As a strike across against Withers, two balls and a strike. McNally has been touched up for three hits total by UVC. 2-1 to Withers. Reaches for one. One hop, snagged at shortstop by Bartels, but no chance to get up and make a throw across the diamond. Nice job to snag that one, keep it on the infield. Withers will get his first hit of the game, coming off of a three-for-three three ball game in the quarterfinals. One, one on, Logan Anderson drew a walk in the first. We'll stand in. In that semifinal, an 11-5 win over Bandon Pacific. It was tied early on, 2-2. UVC would go on to score six runs in the fourth inning to pull away in that one, eventually winning 11-5. First pitch, a strike called to Logan Anderson. UVC had 16 hits against Bandon Pacific, a team they had lost to earlier in the season. Had 16 hits, seven of them were extra base hits. Four hits in this game right now for UVC is a hit and run, looked like it was on, foul ball just down the third base line. It's a foul ball. The home plate umpire is calling a foul ball as Withers was out on the base paths trying to figure out where to go. Coach York going to have a conversation here real quick with our home plate umpire. And they will confirm. Foul ball. That ball was right down the line and just moved into foul territory as it went by third base. So back to the plate for Anderson. He'll have the 0-2 count. Withers was running on that play. Looked to try and maybe get two bases out of the what they had thought was going to be a hit down the line. The 0-2 pitch. This time it's a soft liner to short. Withers off the bag too far. Throw to first. Double play. And that... Clears the bases, and now two down as Tyler Haynes will dig in. Double play. Bases are empty. Ty Haynes, the lefty, will bat. High and away for ball one. Haynes had a single to center field. His first time up, drove in the first run of the game. He'll take low. Withers just didn't pick that ball up off the bat, I'm guessing. He was hustling towards second when he finally realized he had to put the brakes on as a swing and a miss. Haynes with a 2-1 count. And he was gunned out at first base on the double play. He had, uh, he was going to have to take a misplay by Blanchett Catholic to get back safely. And it's going to cost UVC a bit here. A single to center field, a two out single by Haynes. This inning had the markings of possibly being a big one for the Monarchs. And now they are trying to get a two-out rally going here after a leadoff single by Withers. Logan Anderson almost by a fraction's 
just down that third base line. Anderson almost had a base hit. Then ended up lining out, which resulted in the double play. And now Haynes with a single. This could have been a big inning for UVC. Instead, they've got a man at first with two away. It'll be up to Ty Barron, who struck out swinging in the first inning to try and get something going. At first base is Haynes. Takes a late lead. McNally delivers to the plate outside. Well, the OSAA is going digital with Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing partner of the OSAA. So if you plan on heading to the state championship game, if your team makes it there, that's something good to know. Outside, 2-0 count for Barron. Access tickets for all first round through state championship finals via the OSAA website or the OSAA Live app. You can order your tickets in advance and present your digital ticket at the gate. It's convenient, paperless, and easy to use. Visit osaa.org backslash tickets. 2-0 pitch. Barron will take on the inside corner for a strike. Two-one count here in the bottom of the third, a one-one ball game. Blanchett Catholic rallying, rallying back for a one-one game. Runner going at first, the hit and run on, and ball fouled away by Barron. Back to first base will go Hines, uh, Haynes, excuse me. Carson McNally on the mound. He's not going to get a no hitter today. He's given up five hits total in this one to UVC at the moment. But he threw a no-hitter back on April 4th against Culver. Not too shabby for the sophomore. 2-2, he misses outside. In the semifinal win over Reedsport, excuse me, the quarterfinal win over Reedsport, it was Drew Bartels who was the winning pitcher in that one for Blanchett Catholic. Full count pitch with two outs, and it's just outside for ball four. Haynes was running on the pitch. He gets to second base early. Barron will take a two-out walk, third walk in the ballgame issued by McNally. First and second with two down, and that brings up Brooks Potter, who popped out to the catcher to end things in the first inning. 0 for 1 today for Potter. Potter, the starting right fielder, takes low for ball one. Brooks Potter, uh, one of a handful of seniors on this UVC roster, is another visit out to the mound. This time it'll be head coach David Winstead to head out there and have a quick conversation with his pitcher. Potter, Dylan Sparks, Levi Hurd, Aaron Phillips and Joe Buekley, your seniors on this year's UVC baseball team. They've had a chance to make it to a state championship game last year. Unfortunately, last year, UVC losing 11-1 against Kennedy in the title game. UVC won it all back in 2019, one of three state championships for Coach York and the Monarchs. So let's see, 19, 20, 21, 22. No, so this year's seniors class missed out on that by a year. They were eighth graders when UVC last won a state title. The Monarchs trying to get to the state title game for a seventh time in school history. Need the win here today to get there. They're currently tied 1-1. After the visit to the mound, Brooks Potter back at the plate with a 1-0 count. Runners at first and second for UVC. Swing and miss. Well, I know there's probably more conversation going on, but it feels like most visits to the mound can be summed up in just a couple of words. Throw strikes. Let your defense help you out. 1-1, fouled away. 
Potter finds himself down 1-2. I mean, that seems to be the basis of every mound visit for a coach, especially at this level. There might be a little strategery going on. Trying to strategize on what might be best, but for the most part, it's attack the zone, get in there, and let the hitter try to do something. Walks are never going to work in your favor. As Potter takes outside, a 2-2 count. Three walks so far in this one for Carson McNally. Two walks in the first inning. Did prove to be a bit costly. Ground ball, slow roller, third base side, scooped up by Cuff. His throw to Garrig at first will finish things off here in the third inning. Just like that, let the defense help you out. The guys behind Carson McNally come through. As they finish off the third, no runs on two hits. There were no errors, and one man, sorry, make that two men left on base for Umpqua Valley Christian. We go to the top of the fourth, still tied 1-1 here on 541radio.com. Top of the fourth inning, a 1-1 ball game. It'll be Spencer Kowalski, senior catcher, leading things off for Blanchett Catholic against Ty Hellenthal. Hellenthal missing low with his breaking ball. There's a pitch on the outside corner called for a strike at the knees. Kowalski flew out to center field, final out of the first inning for the Cavaliers. 1-1 1-1 pitch, takes a breaking ball high and inside. Kowalski had six RBI in the 21-1 victory over Reedsport back on Friday as he takes high and away. He hit a grand slam in the bottom of the first inning in that matchup as Blanche Catholic scored 10 runs in the first inning. Time called before the next pitch. That game, as you would have expected, ended early, five innings in the win over Reedsport. 3-1 pitch, ball four for Hellenthal. Second walk issued by Ty Hellenthal. Last time he issued a walk, it was a leadoff walk to Landon Gray, uh, Gehrig. Garrick would eventually come around to score on a two-out single by Tyson Smith. Get a runner on. Get a courtesy runner at first base. For Blanchett Catholic, that is J.T. Walsh, a junior that will get a chance to run at first. Drew Bartels will bat the left. uh, He flew out to left field. He'll ground one to short. Withers tried to... Set up to make the long throw across the diamond. His back foot gave out on him a little bit. And he could not plant to throw. Hangs on to the baseball. Smartly hangs on to the baseball. Didn't want to try risk throwing that one away. And there are back-to-back runners on. They walk and now a single on the infield by Bartels, who's now one for one. And Blanchett Catholic in business. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Hellenthal will face Carson McNally. He squares to bunt, offers, misses for strike one. Nobody was covering the bag out at second base where J.T. Walsh was well off the bag, a courtesy runner for the catcher Kowalski. Kowalski. 
Squaring to bunt again, and McNally once again cannot make contact. And Carson McNally, the pitcher who struck out looking in the second inning, finds himself with an 0-2 count, and runners at first and second, nobody out. He was trying to sacrifice himself to get two runners in scoring position. The 0-2 pitch bounces, gets away from Shaver behind the plate, but it trickles up the third base line. The runners will not be enticed to try and take off. Well, OSAA today is your spot for all high school state championship coverage from news, stories, coaches, polls, and more. Get it all by visiting OSAA today. Go to OSAA.org backslash today. Fly ball left field, charging in the center fielder. Tyler Haynes calls off left fielder Levi Hurd, makes the catch, one away. One down, and Griffin Mecken will bat. Mecken is 0 for 1 with a ground out to short. Out at second base is J.T. Walsh running for Kowalski, who had the leadoff walk. Here in the top of the fourth, a 1-1 ball game. First pitch right down the pipe. Helenthal. He's trying to attack the zone and get out of this. One needs a ground ball. See if Withers and Anderson can turn two up the middle. Withers holding on the runner at second, the 0-1. Line drive shot to center field. This has a chance to put Blanchett Catholic in front. The throw coming in, cut off, throw to the plate. Got him at home. Haynes to Withers to Shaver, and they cut down J.T. Walsh at home. And it stays a 1-1 ball game with runners at first and second. Two away now. 8-6-2 to six to two for the put out at home. Two down. Mekin will end up at first base after his line drive single. Bartels is at second. So first and second with two down now. And it brings up Landon Garrick, who drew a walk in the third and scored the only run of the game for Blanchett Catholic. What a play at the plate. Helenthal's first pitch, breaking ball, just a little elevated. count. Cannon ties the hitter to chase. Two balls, no strikes to Landon Garrick. He'll take a strike at the knees there. Well, we got a final score, and Douglas County is now down to one team left, hoping to get to a championship game as South Umpqua is ousted from the playoffs, losing 5-1 to one against Banks. As the runners are going, ground ball up the middle, play to first base, knocked down, but they won't be able to get the out at first. Barron can't handle a ball in the dirt by Anderson. Anderson did a great job to get the ball up the middle there but I don't think he, he didn't realize that he had a lot of time. I'm not sure I wasn't looking if Gehrig maybe slipped coming out of the box. But he was very slow down the line. Anderson had plenty of time, but he tried to make a quick play knowing that normally probably had to get that ball out fast. He one-hopped it to first. Barron couldn't handle it. And on safely will go Landon Gehrig, and the bases are loaded with two away. That should go down as an E4. Mekin up to second. Bartels goes to third. And it's Mitch Wart, the DH, who will bat. 
With the bases loaded and two away. That ball rolled right up the middle on that ground ball by Gehrig. The runners were going, so it had the middle infielders kind of all out of whack, but Anderson got it, had to make the throw across his body, and then just couldn't complete it at first. First pitch strike one from Hellenthal to Wart. Mitch Wart grounded out to second base his first time up. He's got a chance to try and put the Cavaliers in front in a 1-1 ball game. Just outside, a 1-1 count. Two hits here in the fourth inning. Five hits total for Blanchett Catholic. Breaking ball sits on the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. Helenthal working out of his windup with the bases loaded and two away. Gets the hitter to chase upstairs, rolls it into right field, and Blanchett Catholic will grab the lead. One run in, the throw to the plate, gets away, a second run will score. Everybody else moves up 90 feet, and it's 3-1, to one, Blanchett Catholic in front. Mitch Wart grounds one into right field, drives in one run. Bartell scores from third. Mekin got the third, then scores on the overthrow by Tig Barron. That allows everybody to move up 90 feet. Actually, let's see here. Let's think about that again. So Muckin scores. I'm going to say actually give... Mitch Wart, two RBI. Muckin scores. Then the E3 on the throw by Barron allows Gehrig to move to third and Wart to get to second. So that is going to be the second error here in the fourth inning for UVC. And we're back to the top of the order, and we get a pitching change for Umpqua Valley Christian. Moving to the mound is going to be Sean Simonson, who will take a move from third base to the mound and takes over with runners at second and third, two away. Ty Hellenthal was close, couldn't quite get through the fourth inning, and Blanchett Catholic capitalizes with two runs so far. They've got two in scoring position. We'll go ahead and step away and come back with the conclusion to the fourth inning here on 541radio.com. Top of the fourth inning. At the plate, the leadoff man, Noah Hancock, will face Sean Simon Simonson for the first time. Simonson works in a strike. He takes over for Ty Hellenthal. The 0-1 misses low. So Hellenthal will get credit with three and two-thirds. But would be on the hook for the loss unless the score changes in favor of UVC. Pitch goes behind the batter. Everybody will cover, and the runners all stay put. 2-1 count. Helenthal gives up six hits in his three and two-thirds. The 2-1, two Simonson rifles in a strike. Ground ball to third base. 
Picked up, throw across the diamond is high. Another run will score, and a second run will come in. Make it 5-1 to one here on an error-plagued fourth inning for UVC. And I believe that's Hellenthal that has moved to third base. He gets a pat on the back from Levi Hurd, the left fielder who had run in to back up. But an error will score two more runs for Blanchett Catholic. Third error here in the fourth inning. So four run score, it's five to one. Still two outs. The first pitch strike one to Tyson Smith, who is the eighth hitter to the plate. He'll take a strike from Simonson on the outside corner. 0-2 count. Smith is two for two in the ball game. Simonson trying to get UVC through this disastrous fourth. Breaking ball, that ball tapped and will be collected in foul territory by Shaver. Back to the plate for Smith. This inning led off uh, with a walk and then UVC made a great defensive play on a throw from center field. Haynes got it to I believe Withers, and then Withers to throw to the plate. They were able to cut down a runner at home at the start of this inning, but now errors have been big to, for UVC. Fly ball, foul territory, caught just in front of the visiting dugout by Barron to finish off the top of the fourth. Eight hitters go to the plate for Blanchett Catholic. They score four runs on three hits. There were three UVC errors. And one runner left on base. Go to the bottom of the fourth. It's a whole new ball game. Five to one. Blanchett Catholic in front of UVC here on 541radio.com. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be the new pitcher, Sean Simonson, to lead things off for UVC. The Monarchs now with some work to do, trailing up 5-1 against Blanchett Catholic. On the mound still, Carson McNally throwing for the Cavaliers. He'll miss outside for ball one. So the final line for Ty Hellenthal, three and two-third innings. He gave up six hits, five runs, three of them earned, two walks, and one strikeout. And a strike across from McNally. Simonson, a 1-1 count. So Hellenthal would be on the hook for his third loss of the season unless UVC can rally back here in this one. We're midway through the seven-inning contest. Pitch outside, 2-1. UVC trying to keep Douglas County in the hunt for a possible baseball state title this year. Line drive just into foul territory as it loops down the left field side for Simonson. He'll have a 2-1, make a 2-2 count after the foul ball. South Umpqua losing against Banks 2 to one, or excuse me, 5 to 1. Final score in that one. That sounds familiar. It was one big inning for Banks that 
gave them the lead. And they were able to hang on. Simonson says that ball hit him. And that's going to be the call. He did get hit by the pitch. Kowalski was trying to say that was only ball three. And the umpire says, no, that did hit his front arm. Simonson kind of twisting in a beneficial position to, quote, unquote, get out of the way of that pitch. It catches him on the front arm. First hit batter of the ball game for McNally. One on, nobody out. Swing and a miss, strike one to Levi Hurd. Hurd struck out looking in the second. UVC has had plenty of scoring opportunities in this one. Have only been able to muster one run so far. They had the bases loaded with just one out in the first inning and could not get more than one out, uh, one run across. Does a foul ball. Hurd finds himself with an 0-2 count. O2 pitch coming up for Levi Hurd, the nine hitter. Outside. Last we heard, Kennedy was leading six to nothing in the fourth inning against St. Paul as the Trojans look to secure their spot in the 2A, 1A state playoffs, or state championship game. Strike three taken. Hurd goes down looking again. That is strikeout number four on the day for McNally. One away. Still Simonson on at first. Top of the order here, Ty Hellenthal, now the third baseman for UVC, looking for his third hit of the ball game. That's one way to help himself out. He will get it. Sends one through the hole at short into left field. Pratt will send it back in. Three for three day at the plate for Ty Hellenthal. Up to second base goes Simonson. And UVC needs a little bit more of that to help him out here. It'll bring up Kevin Shaver. He's 0 for 1. He's drawn a walk in his first at-bat, left stranded at third base. Visit out to the mound for Coach Winstead here, and it looks like we're going to get a pitching change for Blanchett Catholic. Looks like shortstop Drew Bartels is going to take over on the mound. We're in the bottom of the fourth, one out, two runners on base for the Monarchs, and we get a move on the mound for the Cavaliers. They lead this one 5-1, to one. Trying to hang on to it and not let UVC pull up any momentum here. Carson McNally makes his way through three in a third inning. Neither pitcher makes their way through the fourth inning. And we will come back with all the details on the change after this quick timeout on 541radio.com. New man on the mound for Blanchett Catholic will be Drew Bartels, the shortstop, moving to the mound to take over for Carson McNally. McNally goes three and a third innings, 
right now credited with just one run allowed. It was an earned run in the first on six hits, three walks, four strikeouts, and one hit batter. Well, Kennedy will be one half of the championship combination coming up on Saturday. And we are waiting to determine the opponent for the defending state champion, Kennedy Trojans. Kennedy winning 7 to nothing against St. Paul for their fourth win against St. Paul this season. Kennedy does have two wins against UVC this year, plus the win in the state title game last year. They have not faced Blanchett Catholic at all this season. Both these teams battling to try and be a representative in the state championship game. Coming up on Saturday, time and location to be determined. Drew Bartels will take over on the mound. Landon Gehrig moves from first to shortstop, and from the mound goes Carson McNally to first base. First pitch, swing and a miss. Strike one to Kevin Schaefer, the catcher, looking for his first hit. Both teams with six hits in this one so far today. Bartels delivers the 0-1 in for a strike. O2 count for Shaver. Bartels, the right-handed thrower, comes set working out of his stretch. Misses low. Bartels pitched five innings against Reedsport. He got the complete game victory there, and allowed three hits and one run against a Reedsport team that was beaten 21 to one. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Strike three for Shaver. Kind of a half-hearted swing like he wanted to try and check but could not pull it back. First strikeout for Bartels, and it's a big one. Two down here in the fourth. UVC trailing Blanchett Catholic 5-1. to one. UVC started getting a couple of runners on base here in this one against... Carson McNally here in the fourth, trying to capitalize as Daniel Withers swings through the first pitch for strike one. Withers is one for two today with a strikeout and a single. An 0-1 pitch. Bartels gets him to chase low and outside. O2 count to the number three hitter, Daniel Withers. Bartel set. One strike away from finishing it out here in the fourth, and he gets a foul ball. Still a little ways to go in this one, as mentioned, only about halfway through this contest. O2 count. Bartels will deliver to Withers, and he beans it. That's brutal there. Obviously, you don't want to put a runner on and don't want to load the bases, but you had him with the O2 count, and you hit him by a pitch. So the bases are loaded. Two hit batters here in the fourth inning for UVC. Sean Simonson was the first of the two. He's at third. Ty Hellenthal's at second. And Daniel Withers now at third base. Two away. And it brings up the cleanup hitter, Logan Anderson. Anderson lined out to the shortstop his last time up. That was against McNally. Check swing on the first pitch. Strike one is the call. The 0-1 delivery. Another check swing and another called strike. (laughs) 
0-2 delivery here for Bartels, trying to close off the fourth inning. Gets a swing and a miss for strike three and a big finish. Bartels gets Blanchett Catholic out of the jam. Leave the bases loaded and we'll head to the fifth inning. Blanchett Catholic leading Umpqua Valley Christian 5-1 here on 541radio.com. Top of the fifth inning, big swing and a miss by Dylan Cuff to lead things off for Blanchett Catholic. Cuff will be facing Sean Simonson, who took over in the fourth inning for UVC on the mound. He works a breaking ball in the dirt, a 1-1 count to lead things off. 5-1 our score here at Champion Car Wash Field in Roseburg. UVC trying to get back to the 2A, 1A state title game for a rematch against Kennedy. Blanchett Catholic trying to get to their first ever state championship game in school history. 2-1 count to Cuff, who is one for two in the ball game. Hits a ground ball up the middle. That looked like it hit off the heel for Simonson, but he'll that ball will go right to Daniel Withers up the middle. And Withers will make the throw across to first base on time and accurate to Barron. 6-3 the put out. Cuff out number one here in the fifth. That will bring up Spencer Kowalski, the cleanup man. 0 for 1 today with a walk. Simonson. First pitch, buzzing the tower, backing out of the way, Kowalski. Well, On Point Community Credit Union is a proud sponsor of the OSAA State Championship. On Point is Oregon's largest locally headquartered credit union, serving more than 516,000 members. You can visit onpointcu.com. On Point, federally insured by NCUA, equal housing opportunity. 2 0 count after a pitch to the backstop by Simonson. Tries to work that outside corner again and misses 3-0. Three balls, no strikes, and a get one in for a strike there. The get over pitch for Simonson against Kowalski. Working into the later stages of this one. Fly ball out towards right center. Is going to find the alley. Tracking it down is Potter. Racing for second. No, turning the brakes on and a back to first. Will go Kowalski. Gets his first hit of the game, but he's limited to just a single as Brooks Potter in right field does a great job of tracking that ball down quickly. Kowalski was thinking double all the way. He got about a third of the way towards second before he put the brakes on and started spinning his way back towards first base. One out, one on. It's Drew Bartels, now the pitcher for Blanchett Catholic that will step to the plate. First pitch outside for ball one.
Line drive foul down the third base side for the first strike to Bartels. Four runs in the top of the fourth inning for Blanchett Catholic. Gives them the 5-1 to one lead they have here in the fifth. Throw over to first base, not in time. Checking on the runner over there. That is a courtesy runner for Kowalski. Once again, it is J.T. Walsh. The 1-1 pitch outside from Simonson. Simonson on the mound. He picked up the save against Bandon Pacific back on Friday in the quarterfinal round. Gets a ground ball here to Withers. Withers to Anderson. Over to Barron. Not in time. They get one. Can't get two. But they get the lead runner. Get the 6-4 to four put out at second base. Bartels will get on with a fielder's choice. So one on, two away. And they bring in a courtesy runner for the pitcher. And I believe that is Tyler Milliken that is running at first. There's two down and one on. Carson McNally will bat here. In the top of the fifth inning, UVC trailing 5-1, to one, trying to keep it that way, give themselves a chance in the bottom of the fifth coming up here. Simonson delivers one right down the middle for a strike one to begin the at-bat against McNally. Runner going as the pitch is fouled away. O2 count for McNally, who is 0 for 2 in the ball game. Last time flew out to center field against Ty Hellenthal. Runner going again. Ground ball, curveball to short. Withers with time over to Barron. That will finish off things here in the fifth. Defense here in the fifth inning comes through for Umpqua Valley Christian. For Blanchett Catholic, no runs, one hit. There were no errors and one man left on base. We will go to the bottom of the fifth. Work to do for the Monarchs as they trail 5-1 to one here on 541radio.com. Ty Barron will lead things off for UVC as we kick off the bottom of the fifth inning here. Joey Keyran with you from Champion Car Wash Field in Roseburg. First pitch swinging. Barron lifts one towards center, but it goes straight away to Tyson Smith. Excuse me, that was uh, Tyler Haynes that led things off. My apologies there. 
Haynes, first pitch swinging. He was two for two coming in with a pair of singles. Flies out to center field. One away. Now it'll be Tig Barron who will stand in. 0 for 1 today for Barron. He takes high. Drew a walk his last time up, was left stranded at first. Right now looking at nine base runners left on base for UVC in this one. Outside corner for a called strike. One away with nobody on base in the bottom of the fifth. Five to one in favor of the visiting team in this semifinal matchup. A four-run fourth inning for Blanchett Catholic. Puts them in front. A 2-1 delivery from Drew Bartels, who has taken over in relief on the mound. Works a strike across at the knees. Two-two count. Out of the windup, Bartels swung on and missed. Down on strikes goes Barron. Third strikeout in the outing for Drew Bartels. number four, Two down. That is now seven strikeouts in the ball game for UVC. Up to bat will be Brooks Potter. He takes high and away. Well, the baseball season for the high school team starting to wrap up, but Legion baseball right around the corner. Here on the score on 541radio.com, we'll have coverage of American Legion baseball this summer as a pitch goes to the backstop. Take this opportunity to let folks know about that. So any UVC fans, if you've got players that make the Roseburg Dr. Stewart's this summer, which I imagine there will be a couple of guys off this roster that make the cut for the Docs. We'll have coverage of Docs baseball throughout the summer for you on the score and here online at 541radio.com where you can watch the game. So swing and a miss, strike one to Potter. For Blanchett Catholic fans that maybe are tuning in, if you've got any players that make a AAA Legion club up that direction, maybe... The Salem with Nell Dodgers, I believe, up in that direction. Swing and a miss for strike two for Potter. Maybe I'm not 100% on all my geography up there, but I know you've got uh, Dallas has a team. And there might be another team up in that region up there, but uh, if they play the docks, you know where to find those games on the uh, radio or on the video player there at 541radio.com and on our YouTube channel. So if you're watching and you expect to be catching some AAA American Legion baseball during the summer, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel there, and you can stay up to date with Docs baseball as well as uh, other teams as the season goes along. 2-2 two -two count here to Brooks Potter with two outs and nobody on base. Takes strike three on the outside corner, and down looking goes Potter. Fourth strikeout, back-to-back -back K's to finish things off in the fifth inning for Drew Bartels against UVC. And the Monarchs get no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. We're through five innings of play. We go to the top of the sixth. It's Blanchett Catholic in front, 5-1, to one, here on 541radio.com.
Welcome you back here to Champion Car Wash Field in Roseburg as we start the sixth inning. It's Griffin Muckin to lead things off for Blanchett Catholic. Takes a 1-0 pitch from Sean Simonson for strike one. 1-1 one, one count in a 5-1 ball game in favor of the visiting Cavaliers. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Simonson works one by. Muckin at the plate is one for two in this game. Has scored a run. The one-two pitch, low and inside. Shadows starting to creep out of the left field corner as they do here at Champion Car Wash Field. They'll start stretching across the diamond out towards right field. Two-two pitch, just outside, letting it go by, Muckin. Meckin, excuse me, will have a full count to lead things off here in the sixth inning. Getting to the late stages of this one. The ball fouled away. UVC needing to try and find a way to put some pressure on. They did not do much in the fifth inning. First inning that they were unable to get a runner on base. But right now they're looking to try and keep the Cavaliers off the bases. The 3-2 pitch again will beam the hitter. So Mekin will earn his way on base the hard way. Takes one in the backside. Heads on down to first base. First hit batter for the UVC pitching staff. Mekin's on base for a second time. And it'll be Landon Gehrig, the shortstop, that'll get a chance to bat. He is... 0 for 1 in this game, reached on an error and scored on an error in the fourth inning. Also scored after reaching on a walk in the third. Runner was going. The bunt put down first base side. They're going to let it roll foul. Smart play there by Simonson. Everybody will head back to their bases. Simonson maybe had a chance to field that one and get the out at first, but he read the rotation, saw the direction of that baseball, and decided, I'll let it play out, see if the ball goes foul. And it did just that. Here on the turf field, you get a much truer roll on those. So if it's going straight down the line, there's not going to be much that's going to maybe kick it into foul territory for a team. So throw over to first base will not be in time. Oh, 0-1 count for Garrig after his attempt on the sack bunt. He will show again. Throw down to first. They got the runner off, but they will not get a throw to second base in time. Barron got the throw at first base from Shaver, but he thought the runner was going to be coming back in to first base, trying to slide his way in. So he spun around and applied a tag. There was no runner there, heading for second. Mekin gets in safely without a throw. Throw in, pitch is high. It's a 2-1 count. Landon Gehrig now with a man in scoring position. Squares the bunt again. He'll put it down. This ball foul behind home. And the count evens up. Two balls, two strikes. On the mound, Sean Simonson. Nobody out. It is 2-2 pitch. Fouled away in on the hands for Garrick. We haven't had a lot for stolen bases in this one. Give credit to Blanchett Catholic. They've tried a few times, but foul balls have sent runners back to their bags. 2-2 pitch outside, full count. But Griffin Mekin picks up the stolen base on that pickoff attempt to first. And I believe that would be the first stolen base of the ballgame for Blanchett Catholic. 3-2 from Simonson. Got him to foul off another one.
Count will stay full with nobody out. A 5-1 to one lead right now for Blanchett Catholic. They're in the driver's seat here. Ground, line drive up the middle, gets into center field. Haynes will come up with it. They will not get a throw in, but the runner holds at third. And Coach Winstead at third, maybe kicking himself a little bit, probably could have added a run there, but plays it safe, not wanting to commit a out at home plate with nobody out and runners on the corners now after a single by Garrick, his first hit of the game. Runners at first and third for Blanchett Catholic. And they've got an opportunity to add to their four-run lead. Brings up the nine-hitter, Mitch Wart. A pickoff throw to first gets away. A run will score. Up to second base goes Gehrig. And it's now 6-1, to one, and errors have been huge in this game for the Monarchs. And if those throws get by at first base, there's a lot of room for that ball to roll. And that is just always dangerous. Mekin will score. Gehrig goes to second on the throwing error by the pitcher, Sean Simonson, and a visit out to the mound now for UVC. That's Coach Dave York out there to talk to the troops. Going to have to make up a five-run deficit here in the late stages of this one. Still nobody out and a man at second base. Mitch Wart has not seen a pitch yet. They play with Barron way in. And now he will back up. First pitch buzzes the tower on a bunt attempt. It gets by and everybody moves up and the only runner on base is Landon Gehrig. He'll move up on a pass ball. A 1-0 count for Mitch Ward. Two-zero count. Six to one. Blanche Catholic threatening to add more. Ground ball to short. Withers will throw to the plate. The tag. Got him. It looked like maybe Gary got there as the throw was high. Shaver had to reach down to make the tag. And it looked like maybe the tag was going to be late. Got him on the legs. As Garrick still stands at home waiting to see what the result of a argument by Coach Winstead will be. But I don't think they're going to make a change on this one. It'll stay 6-1. to one. Mitch Wart gets on at first with a fielder's choice. After a ground ball to shortstop Daniel Withers. Withers gets the first out at home plate. One away. They cut down one runner at home. Still already one run in here in the six for the Cavaliers. Strike on the outside corner to leadoff man Noah Hancock, who is 0 for 3. Hancock reached on a throwing error in the fourth inning. And now he gets beamed by a pitch. Ooh. Things are starting to go off the rails a little bit for UVC. Second hit batter here in this inning for Sean Simonson. Nobody throwing in the bullpen for UVC, and here comes Coach York. He's got a glove in hand. We've got a pitching change coming. UVC will move him around on the infield. I believe that Tyg Barron is going to take over on the mound 
for the Monarchs. And I believe Daniel Withers is going to head to first base defensively. The UVC's got to stop the bleeding. Sean Simonson will head back to third base. Hellenthal takes over at shortstop. And on the mound will be Tyg Barron to try and keep this one a five-run deficit for UVC. We'll come back with all the details after this pitching change by the UVC Monarchs on 541radio.com. Well, we welcome all of our viewers online here to today's broadcast of this 2A, 1A, OSAA On Point Community Credit Union State Semifinal Matchup between the Blanchett Catholic Cavaliers and the Umpqua Valley Christian Monarchs. And right now it's the Cavaliers, the three seed, looking to make their way to their first ever state championship game in school history. Tyson Smith will stand in against... Tyg Barron with one out and runners at first and second. First pitch, a breaking ball in for a called strike. Sean Simonson goes back to third base. Ty Hellenthal moves to short, and Daniel Withers now at first defensively for the Monarchs. Ground ball, third base side, picked up by Simonson. Will throw across the diamond. Got it there in time for a double play to clean things up here in the sixth inning. UVC gets the defense they needed there. It'll go down as a 5-3 to three double play, and that gets the Monarchs out of trouble here in the sixth. But one more run comes in for Blanchett Catholic, and they lead 6-1 to one as we go to the bottom of the sixth here on 541radio.com. Joey Keyran here with you from Champion Car Wash Field in Roseburg, Oregon on a beautiful night for some baseball. It's been a pretty good spring season, especially the later half of it. Weather has definitely cooperated for us once we hit the month of May. UVC is looking to get things cooperating with them. They've put up one run. It came back in the first inning. They trail 6-1 to one against Blanchett Catholic. Sean Simonson will lead things off, and he takes strike one from Drew Bartels, who has taken over on the mound, came in in the fourth inning, and he has been able to retire now four straight batters. 
Bounces one in, a 1-1 one, one count. If not for a hit batter, that's the only base runner he's allowed on. Well, dear style, efficiency, and performance, glad we're on the same team this season and every season. Let's keep huddling up and going for it. Toyota, let's go places. It's a pitch high, 2-1 count. Bottom of the six, UVC is the home team in the matchup, so they've got six outs left to work with to try and overcome a five-run deficit. The 2-1, Simonson takes on the outside corner for another called strike. Simonson, the junior. Simonson in this one he is 0 for 1, hit by a pitch his last time up. Takes his time getting back into the box here. A 2 2 pitch. High. UVC at the bottom of their order, 8-9-1 hitters here. Levi Hurd, the on-deck hitter. 3-2. Simonson fouls it back behind home. Good crowd out here tonight. Blanchett Catholic traveling well. Grandstands behind home are filling up, as you would hope to see in a championship uh, semifinal duel here. The 3-2 pitch again to Simonson. Strike three. He watched it, thought it was ball four. We'll have to head back to the dugout. Fifth strikeout for Drew Bartels. Bartels has struck out five. He has faced seven. Gets the first out here in the sixth. Levi Hurd, who has struck out twice, will stand in. He'll take low for ball one. Good crowd, most fans sitting behind home where the luxury seats are, the seats with the backs, but there's plenty of families enjoying the bench seating either side. That's where the kids love to play. On a good night for some baseball. The 1-0 pitch, Hurd pops it up. That one heading towards the visiting dugout, up and over everybody out of play. 1-1 one, one count. Nice night for baseball, but unfortunately the whole point of it is one team will see their season come to an end here tonight. Right now it's Blanchett Catholic looking to advance on, leading 6-1 to one in the bottom of the sixth. The 1-1. One, one. Heard chops at one, high hop, first base side, fielded, flip to first in time. McNally at first base, fields, flips to Bartels, who is covering at the back. Two down, we go back to the top of the order where Ty Hellenthal will look for his fourth hit of the game. Try to get something started, a two-out rally needed for UVC. Hellenthal with three singles in this one. Takes a breaking ball high. He has not faced Bartels in the ball game. This is the last batter to face the right-hander for the first time. Takes a fastball inside, 2-0 count. Hellenthal, the starting pitcher for the Monarchs in line to take a loss if the score doesn't change. He's got a 2-0 pitch, takes high and away. Well, for over 45 years, Pacific Office Automation has remained locally owned and operated, supporting the community and places and people that matter. That's why Pacific Office Automation continues to sponsor the OSAA year after year. Pacific Office Automation, problem solved. 3-0 pitch taken for a strike. Three-one delivery for Bartels. Who look out! Able to get out of the way. Hellenthal will toss away the bat. He gets the trip down to first. A two-out walk issued. Hellenthal on for a fourth time in the ball game. The fourth walk issued by 
LaBlanche Catholic pitchers, the first for Drew Bartels. That'll bring up Kevin Shaver. Struck out, swinging in his first at-bat against Bartels. Check swing. He watches the first one for strike one. Bottom of the sixth inning here in Roseburg. Season on the line. Another strike taken by Shaver. And he will have to battle with two strikes against him. Bartels 0-2 delivery out of the stretch. Couldn't get the hitter to chase. Couldn't get the call. Seems like a lot of anxious act, uh, energy down in the dugout for Blanchett Catholic. They know they're close to securing a trip to the state championship game. 1-2 delivery for Bartels. Line drive goes right by him into center field. And Shaver will have his first hit of the game this half inning. Not done yet. A line drive right back up the middle. Bartels tried to get a glove on it, just missed. Thankfully, stayed out of the way of that one. And there's two on with two outs, and it's the heart of the order here for UVC. And they have to do it with two away. Courtesy runner at first base for the catcher. Running out there is Joe Buekley. Daniel Withers takes the first pitch a little high for ball one. At second base is Helenthal, Buekley at first. Daniel Withers looking to try and cut into the deficit. Fouls off the pitch. Out of play. RBI opportunity for the RBI leader on this UVC club. Withers with 34 RBI on the year. Looking for number 35 at least. Needs to get something going for this Monarchs club. The 1-1. Another ball fouled away. That one again will get out of play. Strike two. So it's a one-two pitch for Drew Bartels. First time against Daniel Withers, he ended up plunking him. The one-two. Well hit ball out towards left field, going back, circling around, and squatting down to make the catch. Riley Pratt is there for the play. Withers got around on the screws on that one, but just hit it right to the defender. Had a chance to be big, unfortunately, does not come up for UVC. The Monarchs will leave two on base as they go scoreless in the sixth. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left on. We go to the seventh inning, closing in on the finish to this one. It's 6-1, to one, Blanchett Catholic in front on 541radio.com.
The Blanchett Catholic Cavaliers will look to try and see if they can add any more insurance, leading 6-1 to one as we head to the seventh inning final frame, unless we go to extras. A berth in the state championship game against the undefeated Kennedy Trojans is on the line. Kennedy defeating St. Paul 7 to nothing earlier today. And booking their first, uh, return trip to the state championship game. It's Ty Barron on the mound. A first pitch strike one to Dylan Cuff, who is one for three today. He slaps one right side. It'll get in for a base hit. Leadoff man on for the Cavaliers. Blanchett Catholic has had a man on base in every inning except for the second. They went scoreless in the first two innings, put up one to tie the game in the third and added four in the fourth. And then one more in the sixth to lead this one six to one over Umpqua Valley Christian, which scored a run in the first inning. They have the bases loaded with one out, got an RBI single from Tyler Haynes to drive in one, and it looked like maybe they were in business to try and do some damage early, but only got the one run across in the first, left the bases loaded. So missed opportunities and some misplays defensively for UVC are the story in this one. In the dirt on the first pitch from Barron, a 1-0 count to Spencer Kowalski, who is one for two in the game at his first hit, a single to right center back in the fifth. He'll take for a 2-0 count. Barron facing Kowalski for the first time. Line drive shot. No, they say no pitch. A Bach called before the pitch to the plate. So Kowalski was about to have a base hit to center field, but gets called back to the dish. It'll be a Bach call that puts Dylan Cuff at second base. It'll stay a 2-0 count for Kowalski. Barron working out of his stretch. Does get a strike across inside corner. Two balls, one strike. Just outside. 3-1. Barron trying to keep it a five-run deficit, not wanting to let anything more come across. That ball is going to go right side, goes right to Brooks Potter. He makes the catch, the throw in. It will not be in time to be able to hold as Cuff will move tag in advance to third base. One away and a man 90 feet from home. If I'm Spencer Kowalski, I'm a little frustrated there. Had an opportunity to base hit taken away because the pitcher balked before the pitch came home. Brings up the pitcher, Drew Bartels to bat, the five hitter. Takes a breaking ball, a little high and inside. Here in the top of the seventh, a 6-1 to one lead for Blanchett Catholic, threatening to add one more with a runner at third. Swing and a miss. Bartels goes after the breaking ball and can't locate it. Defense playing in. Looking to cut the runner off at home if they get the opportunity. Line drive shot. Carries into shallow left center and a run will score on the single by Bartels. His second hit in the contest. His first RBI. And it's now 7-1, to one, Blanchett Catholic. Bartels on at first. Scoring is Dylan Cuff. Brings up Carson McNally.
Runner going, they throw down to second, gets into center field. Just barely, but it does, the runner in safely. Bartels into scoring position with the stolen base. Barron delivers, goes opposite field, sliding to get in front of it, knocked it down, but can't field it. Anderson will have to retrieve it. Scoring from second is Drew Bartels and another run across for Blanchett Catholic. It's now eight to one. That ball just gets away from Anderson, sliding to try and get in front of it. It'll be a base hit, and I guess an RBI for McNally. Bartels using his speed, able to take two bags on the ground ball. Griffin Mucken, uh, Mecken is scheduled to hit. I think they want to get a runner on. And they're going to bring in Nathan Holland for a chance to run. Nathan Holland will come in to run at first base. That'll be a pinch runner, not a courtesy. McNally is the first baseman. Catchers and pitchers get the courtesy runner, not the first baseman. So getting a chance for Holland to get in the game. McNally, I would assume, comes back in defensively at first base. You can re-enter at the same position one time. Griffin Mecken will bat as a pickoff throw. Will not be in time at first base. Mecken is one for two today with two runs scored. Hit by a pitch his last time up. Facing Barron for the first time. Inside. For UVC, they'll have Anderson, Haynes, and Barron do up in the seventh as they look to overcome a seven-run deficit at the moment. Just one out here at the moment in the top of the seventh. Pitch high, 2-0 count. Hot pink bat, hot pink batting gloves for Mekin. As he'll take a little elevated, 3-0 count. Shadows continue to creep out of left field. Strike across on the 3-0 pitch. Standing in shadows is Levi Hurd out in left field. Third base starting to have some shadows as well for Sean Simonson. Ball four issued on the 3-1 pitch, just a little high and inside. Walk issued. First walk issued by Barron. Puts runners at first and second. Still one out, and it is Landon Gehrig to stand in. He is one for two. He has reached base three times. A walk, an error, and a single. Takes loan outside. Blanchett Catholic, three outs away from going on to the state championship game, winning on the road to do so. Strike on the outside corner. Gary, a 1-1 count. Blanchett Catholic did get a first round bye. They beat Grant Union 3-0 in the second round. As a ball popped up, foul territory, Withers, We'll get that one in foul territory for the second out. Big out there for UVC. Thought for sure that ball might carry out of play, but it stayed in, and Withers able to make the play in foul territory just in front of the dugout for Blanchett Catholic. And he swipes away the second out. It'll bring up the nine-hitter, Mitch Wart. 
takes outside. For Blanchett Catholic, they played two home games, so this is their first road game of the postseason as the three seed, and they're looking to win in advance. Strike taken on the inside corner by Wart, who is one for three. Runner going from second, and a balk is called. The runner at second base, that is Nathan Hall and the pinch runner. He took off running from second, and Ty Barron gets called for a balk, and here comes Coach, Coach York out there to have a conversation quickly here. Barron looked like he stepped off first with his back foot, but he must have made a different motion first before he did that. The conversation with Coach York and the umpire goes quickly there. So second balk call here in the seventh inning for Tig Barron. A 1-1 count at the plate for Mitch Wart. Now runners at second and third with two away. Ducking out of the way, Wart. 2-1 count. Well, if you want to stay in shape and make all these big calls, be involved in some of the biggest moments in high school sports, well, then become an athletic official. It's that easy. 2-1 from Barron. Breaking ball falls in on the inside corner. If you want to become an athletic official, they need you now more than ever for soccer, volleyball, and football referees coming up for next fall. Visit osaa.org backslash officials to get more information and to get registered. 2-2, roller up the middle, gets into center field. One run comes in, up and throwing. No, it'll just be one. As Tyler Haynes fires in an RBI single right up the middle for Mitch Wart. Drives in Holland from third. Mecken will stop short at third. Runners on the corners. It's now an eight-run lead for Blanchett Catholic. And two away as we go back to the top of the order. Noah Hancock, 0 for 3, hit by pitch his last time up. He'll ground one back to the mound. It's fielded and throw to first. Barron will get the final out with some good defense off the rubber. And we go to the bottom of the seventh. It's 9-1. to one. UVC needs eight to force extras, nine to walk off with a stunning victory. We'll come back here at Champion Car Wash Field on 541radio.com. Bottom of the seventh inning, here we go. It is nine to one, Blanchett Catholic in front of Umpqua Valley Christian in the 2A-1A state semifinals. The winner moves on to the state championship game coming up on Saturday against Kennedy. Leading things off is Logan Anderson, first pitch, grounds it to short, rolls up the arm for Garrick. He will not have a play. 
And every comeback starts somewhere. UVC is hoping that's where things start for them here today. First error defensively for Blanchett Catholic in the ball game. That one rolls up the arm of Landon Gehrig, the shortstop. Runner on base with nobody out. Tyler Haynes will bat the lefty. Had a home run in the quarterfinal matchup against Bandon Pacific. Fouls off a pitch for strike one. Haynes today is two for three. Last time up, flew out to center field. Has an RBI single back in the first. Drove in the only run of the game so far for UVC. They're hoping that changes here in the seventh inning. Logan Anderson after having two hits in the quarters, goes hitless so far in this ball game. Reaches on for a second time, though. It's a ground ball. Garrick scoops up at short, flips to second, throw to first, double play. And Blanchett Catholic cuts down two. The 6-4-3 double play off the bat of Tyler Haynes. And now UVC in some real trouble, needing an eight-run rally. All with two outs if they're going to do it. And it'll be up to Tyg Barron to try and keep this one going. He swings at the first pitch from Drew Bartels for strike one, fouls it away. Blanchett Catholic looking for their first berth in a state championship game in baseball. Ball in the air, foul territory right side, chasing that ball in the grandstands. McNally ran out of room out there. That's strike two against Barron. Tyg Barron. The first baseman 0 for 2 today with a walk and a pair of strikeouts. The 0-2 pitch. Slaps it opposite field. Carries out to Mekin. Underneath it, the catch is made. Ball game over. It's a 9-1 final. Blanchett Catholic is heading to the 2A-1A baseball state championship game for their first ever berth in the title matchup in school history. Nine to one, your final score as Blanchett Catholic able to capitalize on miscues by UVC. The Monarchs in this one finishing with four errors. A couple of them proved to be a bit costly. And UVC just didn't have the offense today against the pitchers from Blanchett Catholic. Final score, nine to one. And this one goes to the Cavaliers. A well-played ball game by Blanchett Catholic. And their defense coming up with a big double play here in the seventh inning to cut down any real big chance of a run by the Monarchs. Trying to put together the final numbers for you here real quick. As this one comes to an end. It was a nine to one final in the score column. And we'll get you the rest of the numbers here. Five, 10. So your final numbers. For Blanchett Catholic, who gets to celebrate with their visiting fans, which there were quite a few. Nine runs, 12 hits, one error, and seven men left on base for Blanchett Catholic. One run, seven hits, four errors, and 11 men, 11 men left on base for UVC. Your final numbers there. Getting the win will be Carson McNally. 
Pitches three and a third innings. Gave up one run on six hits, three walks, four strikeouts, one hit batter. Drew Bartels comes in. I would put him down as a save. He pitches three and two thirds. And he ends up giving up just one hit, no runs. He would walk one and finish with five strikeouts in the ball game. On the other side, Hellenthal will take the loss. Ty gives up five runs, three of them earned on six hits. Two walks, one strikeout in three and two-third innings. Sean Simonson pitched an inning in two-thirds. Ty Barron pitching the final, let's see here, inning and a third. It was a 1-0 lead after the first inning. UVC scored a one-out run on a bases loaded single by Tyler Haynes and that is all they would get. It looked early on like they'd have a great opportunity to jump ahead in this one. Had the bases loaded but couldn't finish it off with more than just one run. A strikeout and a fly ball out to the catcher finished off the frame and it was 1-0 as McNally did a good job of limiting the damage in the first. Blanchett Catholic would get one in the third inning on a two-out single by Tyson Smith after a leadoff walk to Landon Gehrig by Ty Hellenthal. It was 1-1 after three. In the fourth inning, things fell apart for UVC. A walk to lead it off to Spencer Kowalski, then a single to Drew Bartels, put two runners on base. Carson McNally would fly out to center field. Still had two runners on. Griffin Meckin would single the center, and it looked like an opportunity to drive in a run. But it was Tyler Haynes that threw in to Daniel Withers, who got it to the catcher, Kevin Schaefer, in time to apply the tag at home for the out, and there were two down. But then that's when things went off the rail. Landon Gehrig gets on with an error at second base. And then you had another error by the first baseman and another error by the third baseman, all told four runs on three hits and three errors in the fourth inning. And Blanchett Catholic led 5-1. to They'd add another run in the sixth inning, once again on an error. That came in on a throwing error by the pitcher. And then they added three more runs in the seventh inning on four hits. An RBI single for Carson McNally, RBI single for Mitch Wart, and an RBI single for Drew Bartels in there as well. So that is how it played out here, and now Blanchett Catholic will look to try and pull off the biggest win of the season. Can they knock out the undefeated Kennedy Trojans, the number one overall seed, looking to go back-to-back state championships with a win here this year? If they can do that, they would be the fifth team all-time to go completely undefeated in the season and win a state championship. The last to do it was Napa back in 2018. That game will be on Saturday. We're waiting to find out the sites of those championship games and the game times, but that'll happen on Saturday, so stay tuned for that here coming up. We'll have uh, more details uh, you can find online at at, uh, OSAA.org. You can find the bracket there to figure out when that state championship game will take place. As for UVC, the season comes to an end. 27-4, and four, a great year. They fall one win shy of getting back to the state championship game for a second consecutive season. They will graduate seniors Brooks Potter, Dylan Sparks, Levi Hurd, Aaron Phillips, and Joe Buekley. That group of seniors will graduate from this program, but they return a lot of starters next year for this a uh, UVC team in Ty Hellenthal, Kevin Schaefer, Daniel Withers, Logan Anderson, uh, Tyler Haynes, Ty Barron, Sean Simonson. Those guys will all be returning next year for this UVC team that will have a lot of experience going into senior year for many of those players next season. So that is how things wrap up for the Monarchs here in 2023. Now we uh, here locally, we start getting ready for the American Legion baseball season, which starts June 5th for us here on The Score and online at 541radio.com. For Blanchett Catholic, one more game left to go as they will have a berth in the state championship game against Kennedy coming up on Saturday. All right, that's going to do it for us, folks. 
for fans of local sports here in Douglas County. Make sure you stay tuned to 541radio.com for details on what we've got coming up next on our sports broadcast schedule. For Blanchett Catholic fans that are tuning in to follow this one here uh, from Roseburg today, uh, again, head to osaa.org to find the, uh, the schedule of the championship games coming up on Saturday, and they'll have uh, links to coverage for those games for you online there. It's been a great day at the ballpark. It's been my pleasure to be here broadcasting this one for you. I'm Joey Kieran. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. want to say thank you to the Blanchett Catholic Cavaliers and head coach David Winstead for a little bit of uh, chat in the pregame. I want to say thanks to head, co- head coach David York as well as uh, Athletic Director Tim Barron for welcoming me into the broadcast to cover this one for you here today. It's been a lot of fun and happy to do so. And as always, a thanks to you, the fan, for tuning in for tonight's broadcast because, of course, without you, I'm just a guy sitting here talking to myself. I'm Joey Kieran. Enjoy the rest of the high school baseball season. It wraps up on Saturday, and you can find all the details at osaa.org. Have a great night, everybody.